Good morning and a warm welcome to all. My name is Kim Hui Nyo, Managing Director at the World Economic Forum, and I head up the Centre for Nature and Climate. This year's annual meeting is happening in challenging times. Coupled with extreme weather events, affecting the lives of many people around the world. And as I speak, India and Pakistan ex are experiencing extreme high temperatures, while California and France are facing severe drought. We need to massively scale up, speed up, and bring down the costs of climate solutions, both nature-based and technological innovations. The International Energy Agency has estimated that around half of the emissions reductions needed will come from technologies that have not yet reached maturity. And this is why in November last year at COP26, with support from US President Biden, the State Department, led by Presidential Convoy Envoy for Climate, John Kerry, together with the World Economic Forum, launched the First Movers Coalition. The coalition seeks to create a marketplace for technologies and solutions that can accelerate the energy transition. Companies who join the coalition commit to buy materials, transportation services and fuels that are critical for emissions reductions, consistent with science-based targets for net zero. We focus on the sectors where transition is especially difficult, such as steel, cement, aviation, shipping, and together this account for 30% of global emissions. And today, I'm very pleased to be here because we are excited to announce an expansion of the coalition in three areas. One, increase in number of companies making purchasing commitments. Two, expansion of government partners to the effort. And three, an increase in the number of sectors that will be covered by these purchasing commitments. I will now invite each of the panelists to speak and I'll ask them to kindly keep their comments within three minutes so that we can leave some time for questions. Secretary Kerry, if I may start with you first. You have been personally involved in championing this coalition, and I want to thank you for your leadership in this. Why is this so important? Thank you, Kim Wei, and, and thank you to all of the folks who are up here who are leaders in this effort representing extraordinary companies. And, very important thank you to Bill Gates, who is our primary implementation partner and who helped uh, from the very beginning to give this um, the sense of uh, importance that it ought to have. Um, I also want to thank the World Economic Forum for partnering with us on this. Um, I think it is fair to say um, that this is the flagship global public-private partnership initiative at this moment uh, for deep decarbonization. And we all understand the urgency which grows by the day. What this initiative is geared to do is what Bill has set out to do with Breakthrough Energy, which is breakthrough, bring to the forefront of American enterprise and global enterprise, every country in the world, every business in the world, an embrace of the reality that we must bring critical technologies to scale much more rapidly than we are today. We have technologies, we know how to do certain things, but the market has to begin to embrace that. It did through a government signal on vaccines. And we created the vaccines because people knew there was a purchaser there. We did the same thing with respect to space flight. We said we're going to buy the capacity and we bought the capacity and now there's private space flight. The same thing can happen here. This is a demand signal, one of the biggest demand signals that we could send. And so today, uh, the First Movers uh, Initiative leaps from the 35 initial, initial companies that came to the table uh, to 55 companies with additions of major corporations, FedEx, Ford Motor Company, others. Uh, they're, they're all in the press release and time is short and I want to uh, try to get where we need to go here. But we welcome these companies. They represent almost $9 trillion of global worth. They are 10 percent of the Fortune um, uh, 2000. It represents in, in total economic enterprise about 50 percent of global GDP has now committed 
to this First Movers Coalition. And so today, with the additional uh, companies, people are committing to buy 10 percent of a particular product, like green steel or cement. And in addition, shippers, for instance, are agreeing that they're going to build carbon-free ships now, even though that may be more expensive in the beginning. It's going to help to create the demand signal for the market. Uh, we're also uh, expanding beyond the initial four sections of, uh, that we defined initially, uh, embracing now carbon dioxide removal and new technologies. Microsoft and Google, along with Salesforce, have made a $500 million commitment to purchase advanced carbon dioxide removal technologies by 2030. And um, uh, we're talking about durable and, and scalable removal processes that could last, have a, a span of storage for about a thousand years or so or more. And under, we're also uh, launching in aluminum. Uh, and what, we, what, this enterprise, what this initiative has done is targeted the toughest sectors of economies, which people said were most difficult to decarbonize, uh, like shipping, aviation, uh, cement, aluminum. Uh, and now with direct carbon removal, we're also adding aluminum to the list of uh, those categories where uh, special initiatives are going to be uh, taken. And under the commitment, uh, companies are going to commit to purchase 10 percent of their aluminum by 2030 from plants that are cleaner than any plants that we have in existence uh, today. Uh, and the First Mover Coalition is, is mobilizing enormous purchasing power now to induce investment in brand new technologies that could come to market. Third, we have brought on new government partners, and this is important. Uh, Sweden, India, Japan, Norway, Italy, the UK, Singapore, Denmark, because countries can begin to implement policies that augment each of the sectors that we just uh, 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 talked about and can accelerate the development of those technologies. There are all kinds of things, tax policy, public policy, incentives, uh, various budget, uh, concessionary funding, all of those things will excite the private sector to be able to embrace the goals here. So we're excited about it in, in just six months' time. Since we launched, companies are now making real purchases. Uh, an example, one partner, DHL, has purchased 12 electric airplanes to enter service by 2025. 20, uh, uh, Dalmia Cement is launching a pilot electric truck uh, project in India. Uh, and uh, Fortescue and Maersk are buying zero carbon ships. That's the example that we need to set, and everyone up here is committed to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Kerry. Um, and next, uh, Bill, can you tell us why um, you decided to team up with the First Movers Coalition? Well, solving climate change is harder than any problem mankind has ever solved. It's the entire physical economy. A uh, great reminder of that is the uh, latest Vasov Smeal book called How the World Really Works, with an emphasis on really, uh, that goes through the scale of things that, that need to change. You know, back in 2015, there wasn't a lot happening. We got the Paris Accords, but the R&D budgets weren't high enough. The venture funding wasn't there. Uh, the innovative ideas weren't moving fast enough, and the private sector was not engaged. And the First Movers Coalition is about engaging the private sector, particularly on the demand side. So many of the green products uh, carry a price premium, and the way you get rid of that is you scale up the production. Uh, that happened with solar panels, it happened with wind, it happened with lithium ion. We have about a dozen additional technologies, including things like green hydrogen, that we need to reprise that. And so a combination of uh, policies, including tax credits, uh, private sector demand, teaming up these small companies that have great ideas uh, with uh, these companies that are willing to buy, you know, that is the path forward. Uh, I'd say in the last four years, uh, the progress of the innovative companies that Breakthrough Energy and others have been providing funding to 
has been way better than I expected. And so the opportunity now to bootstrap green steel, bootstrap green cement, uh, bootstrap green aviation, uh, it's stronger than ever. So the FMC work, you know, brings companies and governments into this effort. Uh, we have a, a specific pr project funding vehicle called Breakthrough Energy Catalyst uh, that will actually be making its first few grants this year. And even though these projects are often uh, government driven, making sure the right technology is picked, make sure, making sure they're done efficiently, you know, it's worth having that mm -hmm. private sector seat at the table uh, to help those projects uh, achieve those cost reductions. So uh, today's a great milestone in a very difficult long term project. Thank you, Bill. And Ruth, Google has been a front runner in the climate space. Uh, you have plans and strategies since 15 years ago. Can you tell us more about what are your commitments under the First Movers Coalition? Absolutely, thank you. <laughs> it's terrific to be here. So sustainability has been core to everything we do. We have a lot of efforts really across the time spectrum. We're doing things with both immediate impact and also with longer term impact. Uh, first, we made a commitment by year end 2022. This year, we would help a billion people uh, take action to live more sustainably. And we're doing that with data in search and with maps. So for example, when you uh, go on Google Maps, you'll get the greenest route. Second, with our enterprise customers, we have this wonderful asset, Google Earth Engine. We've mapped the planet. And when you combine that with data analytics and AI, we can help com companies look through their supply chain. So for example, we're working with Unilever, which wants to make sure it can see through its supply chain to mitigate any risks around deforestation. And then third, we made a commitment within our own operations. We set a goal to be net zero by 2030 um, through our operations and value chain, and that also includes 24-7 carbon-free energy for all of our data centers and our offices. And in fact, we're already running five data centers, 90% on carbon-free energy. The critical point, and it's already been said today, no one entity can do this alone, and there's just real impact and power in public-private collaboration. We do believe it's the only way to solve the climate crisis, and we think the First Movers Coalition is absolutely critical here, it plays a key role. And we do think technology innovation is an important part of really getting the planet to net zero. So we view FMC as very exciting because it's creating this forum for companies to commit to purchase new solutions in these hard to abate areas, hard sectors. And in our view, that will help accelerate innovation by reducing risk for suppliers and by incentivizing commercialization. And the area that we're focused on for FMC is carbon dioxide removal. We recently announced a $200 million commitment to an unprecedented corporate consortium. It's called Frontier. Um, and that led to $925 million in advance market commitments to purchase carbon removal over the next eight years. We have seen that having clarity and certainty about demand does catalyze growth in uh, markets. We did this back in 2012. We committed that we would match 100% of our energy consumption with renewables. With that demand, that long-term demand order out there, it increased supply and we were able to hit our commitment early by 2017. So we're very excited about this approach. We do believe it has the opportunity to catalyze real change and are very grateful to Secretary Kerry and the forum for really bringing us all together and getting us moving. Time is of the essence. Thank you, Ruth. And now I want to go to Mark. Um, Salesforce is already at net zero emissions across your entire value chain. What do you hope to achieve with the First Movers Coalition? Well, thank you so much. I'm so grateful to you for your leadership of our whole Nature Center, so thank you. And um, thank you as well to Secretary Kerry for his tremendous leadership uh, globally and everything that is going on. I'm so excited. Uh, about what we've heard and seen and witnessed and taken action on in the, just in the last two days. Um, you know, we're, we're witnessing really the emergence of a new environmental capitalism. Uh, this environmental capitalism, this is something that I personally so badly want to see every company um, becoming part of this movement. Um, number one, we're all becoming net zero. Salesforce is already net zero and fully renewable today. Uh, this is extremely important to us. Uh, 
Google has been an incredible visionary and leader in this area. We're so fortunate to be able to, to partner with them. And I'll tell you that what that means is we all have to continue to reduce our, reduce our emissions. There's no substitute for that. Uh, and then we need these new solutions, and that's why FMC is so important. FMC is so important, and why we're joining this multi-hundred million dollar commitment is because we are very much energizing this ecopreneur revolution. This idea that there's so many exciting new technologies that you've seen created, you know, companies that are getting funded by these next generation um, energy consortiums, things we could have never thought of even maybe just three, four, or five years ago that we can put into action uh, today and that we are. I, I think it's also important not only to really say that we're becoming net zero today, but we must also sequester 200 gigatons of carbon right now. That is why two years ago we were here and we introduced one trillion trees, uh, one trillion trees which is now we've turned over uh, after founding it to the World Economic Forum, uh, has just had tremendous success and we can see uh, a clear trajectory to our goal of the ability to conserve and plant uh, a trillion trees by 2030. Yesterday, I am so grateful to Minister Shea, who came here from Beijing, and committed to not only join trillion trees, but 70 billion trees, way beyond our expectation. So important because China represents 25 percent of all the trees on the planet, and also so grateful as well to the United States government and President Biden, who through the Replant Act, which was part of our recent infrastructure bill, committed $8 billion to planting and conserving trees in the United States. Um, and you, 65 major U.S. companies who have joined us as part of uh, American Foresters' uh, efforts, uh, that's 35 billion trees. So net zero, new solutions, sequestering the carbon that's there, and igniting this ecopreneur revolution that I think, you know, we, we've seen. We have the number one entrepreneur in the world right here, down sitting two steps from me. When he went into technology, he was excited and thrilled about technology and inspired people like me to follow him. Today, I think that both of us look at the environmental world and say, wow, if we were starting over today, we'd go into this environmental technology and we would be ecopreneurs, not tech entrepreneurs. We saw this uplink network that Salesforce and Deloitte created and launched here in 20. 20 uh, of ecopreneurs now has 30,000 of these ecopreneurs. That is so <laughs> exciting. So thank you. I'm so grateful to you, to uh, the WEF and, and John. Thank you for your global leadership. And, and Bill, thank you for everything that you're doing. And, um, and yes, let's all uh, create this incredible new uh, environmental capitalism. Thank you, Mark. Minister Mikkel. You're one of the new government partners uh, for the coalition. Can you give us the government perspective and what are your ambitions for the coalition? Yes, thank you. Sweden is committed to be uh, a first mover country. Uh, we want to be the first fossil free welfare nation on the planet. We're on track uh, to our national goals on 2030, uh, and but we have to do more to, to actually uh, meet our goals on 2045, net zero emissions, and then negative emissions. Therefore, today we're proud uh, to join the First Mover Coalition as a government partner, but also to take place in the steering committee. We're also proud of the four companies that was actually founding partners of the First Mover Coalition. Uh, many of them uh, has been mentioned uh, as an example of how we can go about to, to do the transition. Today we see a green uh, revolution in industry in Sweden. In 2020, uh, the first global pilot plant for fossil-free steel production was launched in Luleå, in northern part of Sweden. This is one of the biggest technological shifts in steel manufacturing in a thousand years, and lay the foundation for a fossil-free steel production globally. I, it puts Sweden in a position as an early leader in the use of fossil-free hydrogen. Government's uh, financial support from the industrial leap has played a central role, role in enabling investments. But we see the, uh, the investments in, in energy, in uh, mining, in battery production. So we see a revolution. 20, 25,000 new jobs are creating the next five years in northern part of Sweden. Traditional industries transforming. Volvo already produced their first fossil-free carrier for mining industries. 
of the fossil free steel. So this is a revolution going on. So Sweden is committed. Uh, we want to see more Swedish companies getting on board, but we also hope that Sweden can serve as an example, show the world that it is possible to do the transformation. Thank you, Minister. And uh, last but not least, uh, Brett, could you tell us more about Microsoft's plans for the first movers? Well, yes, first of all, thank you all. It's great to be here. Thank you, Secretary <laughs> Kerry, for your leadership. And I guess you're looking at the, uh, the second joiners of the first movers. <laughs> um, and I have to admit that when I was in Glasgow, I saw the meeting of the first movers taking place and I turned to our team and I said, why aren't we in that meeting? So thank you for giving us the opportunity. It's going to take a long group and many years to work together. Uh, it's also just fantastic to, to be here you know, with Ruth and Mark, and you see the tech sector working together, even though every day uh, we do a lot to compete with each other, but we're really sitting on the same side of history. And I think we're sitting on the side of a table that will continue to grow. Um, let me just say a moment about carbon dioxide removal, CDR. Why does that matter? Well, first, if you read Bill's book or you just listen to the conversation, it's always about net zero. We have to drive a massive reduction in emissions, but there is still going to be carbon that is emitted, and it needs to be balanced with carbon that is removed so that you get to net zero. And we have a lot of work to do in both areas. You know, at Microsoft, on the one hand, you know, we're proud of the fact that during the last two years, we contracted for 2.8 million tons of carbon removal. But there's some challenges with that. First of all, when you look at the scale that will be necessary, this is like dropping four drips of water in the Pacific Ocean. It's almost nothing. But the other thing I have to admit is one of the great fringe benefits of working at uh, Microsoft is you get free tuition at the Bill Gates School of Climate Science. So I would go over and visit with Bill a couple of miles away and I would describe to him what we were doing and he would look at me and he would say, that is not good enough. And he would basically say it for two reasons. One is he would say, it's not durable. We need to get carbon out of the environment and we need to keep it out of the environment for at least a thousand years. So if you look at the definition today of durable removal, that this coalition is advancing, it is based on precisely that standard. And the second bill would say is it needs to be scalable. And it won't be scalable unless two other conditions are met. One is it's going to take real technology innovation. And second, perhaps most of all, we need to build a market because that's the only way things ultimately will scale. And that's what Google and Salesforce and Microsoft today together are committing to do to spend a substantial amount of money, half a billion dollars by 2030, on durable removal that by definition will require the use of new technology with large amounts, at least one million tons for each of us. I think we're gonna easily surpass that, but really this is about building a market and validating the market so it can take off and grow. Thank you. We are doing well on time. Five minutes remaining. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take two or three questions from the floor and then I'll uh, open up to the panelists uh, to respond. From the press, right? Yes, from the media. Yeah. From the media. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Could you identify yourself as okay, well? Okay, yeah. sure. Thank you very much. Uh, Europe correspondent from Shanghai Media Group. Uh, I have two questions. The first question is, uh, what. Wh uh, what is the ultimate goal of the First Movers Coalition? It's like how many companies do we want to involve in the coalition? Of course, I know that the best prospect will be all First Movers Coalition to All Movers Coalition, but like how influential would this coalition be? And second question, as Mark just mentioned, that you've met uh, Xie yesterday. So we want to know if uh, you guys heard any interest from the public sector and private sectors from China. Thank you very Thank much. You. Maybe we can take one more question. Yes. Yes. This gentleman here. Oh. Peter Holmes got from the Australian Financial Review. Could someone say something that you would say to the nations who haven't joined yet? Say something like to a country like Australia, what would you say? Cool. And maybe one more from the lady behind. Yes. 
Um, and this is from Taishin Media China. So I have a, pr a question for Mr. Kerry about the yesterday uh, you have a, a good talk with Ms. Xie and also mentioned that you met Xie uh, yesterday. And I want to know, uh, because nowadays people say this uh, cooperation in climate between China and U.S. is a good sign of this uh, two countries' relationship. Uh, how, so what does Mr. Kerry think about this expectation from outside? And uh, do you think it's opportunity, you know, not just climate, but also for other sides of between China and the U.S.? Thank you. One more? Yeah. Just one more. And then we will uh, invite responses. Hi. <clears throat> I'm Peter Brigham, and the AP's Global uh, Climate and uh, Environment News Director. Uh, a question for, for the coalition. If down the road you expect to add, I don't know, companies that, that actually work towards reducing emissions, not just burying emissions, you know, in carbon capture, but kind of going beyond and looking at consumption and just trying to get a better sense of that. Cool, thank you. S Secretary Kerry, would you like to respond? Please? Well, uh, the answer is we want as many companies as humanly possible so that we create a critical mass, which then doesn't necessitate a first mover anymore. It's very simple. But I can't tell you what that level is gonna be because as Bill will tell you, this, and, and everybody has underscored, this is tough. It's doable, and the IEA made it clear that after we left Glasgow, with 65% of global GDP committed to plans that legitimately hold the Earth's temperature increase at 1.5 degrees, then we have to bring the other 35% on. These technology steps that everybody is taking here will encourage and make it easier for those other countries and companies to be able to make the decision to come on. The marketplace is going to do this. Not, you know, it's not going to happen by government decree. It's not going to happen but just because these companies are here. It's going to happen because people are going to see there's a demand for this. Citizens all around the world want a better life. They want clean air. They don't want drought and fires and floods and storms and the threat of massive sea level rise and so forth. And that's the course we're on right now. So. The greatest disruptor of business will be climate crisis if we don't move fast enough. And the greatest risk for a business is not the risk of putting their money into this. It's the risk that comes with not doing enough, with not investing. So that's our goal, to keep pushing this as hard as we can. Now, with respect to uh, Australia, of course we want Australia to uh, come on board. and. Um, we, we, we're very hopeful. Uh, we've worked with uh, the Morrison government. We now look forward to working with the new government. And um, uh, hopefully uh, they will join and become a country that is part of our country effort here as well as other initiatives. On uh, Minister Shia, uh, we had a very good meeting. I mean, Minister Shia and I have known each other for 25 years or plus. Uh, we call each other friends because we are. And our countries have differences. We both know that, we, we, we acknowledge it, and acknowledge it publicly. But President Biden and President Xi both said a year and a half ago that they were committed to make sure that climate is recognized, the climate crisis is recognized for what it is. It's not a bilateral issue. It is a multilateral, global, universal, existential issue for every country and every person on the planet. It has no political labels. Everything we are doing is driven by mathematics and physics. And the scientists who are warning us and telling us and interpreting the math and the physics to give us a sense in, in layperson terms of what we have to do. And what we have to do is reduce emissions many times faster than we are today. We are, we are we're, still not on the course we promised we would be. Uh, the IEA said if we do everything we promised to do in Glasgow, we could be at 1.8 degrees by 2050. Well, we're not doing everything we said yet. But this initiative and others are going to kick everybody into higher gear. And, and I know uh, maybe we could get you know Bill and a few of the folks out of the tech world to speak for a moment about the amazing things that are beginning to happen. We have technologies. Maybe 50% of the technologies we need, though, while we have them, 
we have to bring them to scale. They have to be put into demonstration. They have to work through a process. Bill himself is building a new design nuclear plant in Wyoming. And, and that's going to take four or five years. But we have to go through that process. Finally, Minister Shia and I are going to meet in Berlin uh, tomorrow. And we will continue our process of trying to find a way forward. Why is that so important? Because China represents 28 percent to 30 percent of all the emissions. And we, the United States, represent 10 to 15. So together, we bear an enormous responsibility to move faster and to be leaders in this initiative, which is why President Biden has committed the diplomacy of our nation as well as money. And, and, and we're looking for more, as you all know, from the United States Congress, and hopefully we will get there too. Thank you. I think we're at time, and thank you all for your audience. Thank you.